Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the Imports folder, which is new to Meteor 1.3. And we're going to be talking about how that relates to React while, in fact, building our first React component and discussing a bit about React. So let's get started right now. Okay, so here we have our hello component. Absolutely nothing going on special here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and actually talk about the import folder. Before, we've only worked with this client and server folder where everything automatically gets imported. Like I mentioned briefly, anything in this client folder doesn't necessarily need these import statements, but we want them, right? We want this, this sort of style where we import something, it keeps all our code organized, it lets us know exactly what we're using all the time, and it could seem a little verbose, but it's definitely worth it. Let's go ahead and now let's create a new folder new folder at the root that's just called imports. Now inside of imports, we're going to create two new folders. This is going to be one that is client and one that is server. Now this can be a little bit confusing here because we already have a client and server folder. However, uh, basically these import client and server folders, the difference here is that one, uh, these do not automatically get imported. If we do anything within these folders, we have to explicitly import it into a file that is automatically compiled like this main.js. And the reason we still separate them out into client and server is because if we didn't, we would still have to wrap our code, if it was client-side code, in a Meteor is client statement rather than uh, a Meteor is server or anything like that to specify whether it's client or server side. However, just like with the auto-compile folders client and server, if we name a client folder and a server folder inside of our imports, Meteor knows that the code inside of this folder is going to be client-side code. Now let's go ahead and create a new file, and this new file will simply just be app.js. Now I am capitalizing the app in here because typically what I do is a code style is I name the file after the React component itself. And the React components, the standard is essentially to have them be uh, just uppercased like this. So app starts with a capital A, okay? Uh, just some explanation there. Now let's go ahead and cut out app here. I'm just going to cut it out completely and I'm going to paste it into here. Now let's go ahead and uh, let's just save, save some of this stuff. You'll notice immediately you're going to get an app is not defined. Okay, so how do we make app defined? Well, first thing we have to do is export app. Because app.js is not automatically exported, we have to say export. Now we're going to say default. Export default class app extends component. You're going to be seeing this a lot. So export default means that when we import it, we don't need to use these brackets. And we can say, let's go ahead and import app. Notice how there's no brackets from and then the path to that particular file. So the path to that file is going to be relative from where we are currently. We're gonna back out of the client folder by doing dot dot. Then we're going to go into the imports folder. Then we're going to go into the client folder. And then we're going to grab app. Notice how I don't have to say app.js here. I can just say app. It assumes that it's .js or .jsx. Uh, you can see that we have import app from imports client app. Okay, so app should be imported. We should be no longer getting app is not defined, but now you'll notice that we're getting an error that says component is not defined in app.js line one. Okay, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and grab this React component import statement that we have at the top line and start off our file with that. Basically, any React component that you ever make is going to need to import React, uh, comma, component from React. This is how pretty much everything I have ever looks, okay? So let's save this, and now you can see our hello is back instantly. Super cool. Let's go ahead and actually head back to Adam. And if we were to remove the default 
from our export statement. Just to show you a little bit, you can see uh, there's now some issues here. And what we'd wanna do inside of our main is you could wrap this in a bracket because this is no longer the default, it's just being exported and you'll notice everything works again. The reason why you might do this is if you have more than one export per file. Uh, it's unlikely that we're going to have stuff like that in this series. Uh, but it's good to know sort of why you see things. Often I see brackets or whatever, and people don't necessarily like to take the time to explain why they're using them or not. Okay, so we now have something inside of our imports folder. It's being imported into main.js, and this is auto compiling, right? So the process goes, our app starts up, it looks at main.js, it imports this stuff, it finds app from our imports folder, and then it renders app into our render target. Nice and easy, right? Super easy. Now let's go ahead and actually do something a little bit more interesting within this, this app component, right? Because right now it just says hello. Let's talk a little bit about React. Now React, you can have things like component state, where you can modify essentially a variable that gets updated and saved within the component as its state. You can have all sorts of events. You can work with stuff and it's really just JavaScript, remember that. So if we were to do something like let, which is uh, a different version of var, essentially that changes the scoping. Um, but I pretty much use let for everything unless it's a constant variable. So we can say let hello is going to be equal to, and this is just going to be a string that's just going to be my name, hello Scott. Now inside of our h1 here, we can actually use this variable. Anytime you want to use JavaScript within your render return, you can do so with these just curly brackets. So we can say, hello, like this. And this is just going to simply reference this variable and it's going to output this string. It's absolutely nothing crazy. It's just JavaScript. And you can see it now says, hello, Scott. And that's one of these things I love about React is that it gets you better at JavaScript, right? Because everything is really just JavaScript, uh, it gets you better at the basic principles of JavaScript. Okay, so now we can say, hello, Scott. And uh, because we're using JSX, we can output this in an H1. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's keep that hello Scott, but let's go ahead and add something like a click function, right? So inside of our h1, we want to say when you click on the h1, let's just console log something. So we can say on click is going to be equal to, and then inside of this is just brackets. So you're going to be seeing properties like this a lot within JSX, where we have everything camel case, and it sort of looks just like a standard HTML data property or anything like that. But we can say on click, and now we want to run a function. We can just say this function will be uh, named heading click. To access this function, we're, well, you could do this a couple of ways. Let's go ahead and up above our function here, uh, or above our class, we can say let heading click equal to a new function that just is going to console.log hello, okay? Just like that. And now inside of this on click here, we can simply just say what we want to do is heading click, okay? So on click use this heading click function that's going to hit this function and just console log hello. See this in action with my console open. I'm gonna bump up the size here so you can see how exciting this is. Okay, so a console logged hello, easy stuff. But let's say we want this heading click function, we want this to be scoped into this component, right? What we could do is actually above the render function, we could add the heading click function, just like this, heading click, parentheses, and just like that, we now have our heading click function as scoped inside of this component. So let's remove this class, let's delete this one, 
Actually, you know what? I'm going to com I'm just going to uh, comment this out so I can keep this in the code that we had. And let's go ahead and paste in heading click hello. Now, one thing you're going to notice is heading click is not defined, but heading click uh, is defined, right? Well, not really, because we're calling heading click in sort of a global sense. We want to call this in, in terms of the component, which we can access with this, this dot heading click. So now this heading click is inside of this component. No more error, and when we click our heading, we do get our hello. Okay, so this is some JSX or some React basics here, right? We have a basic on click function, and it's really just outputting a console log. Okay, super cool. This is nothing groundbreaking. This is nothing, but it should get you used to the sort of feeling of working within a component. Inside of our component, you're going to have functions that you can access, and soon we're going to talk about state as well. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about the internal React component state. And after we get through some of this basic React stuff, we're going to head into Meteor stuff where we can actually start saving things to the database. So check it out as we get going further and further with our application. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in this video or hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. I love to hear from you. If you want to watch the rest of this series, head to store.leveluptutorials.com and purchase this series. You'll get access to all of the videos within the series, or you can become a Level Up Pro subscribe and get early access to everything. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.